Hey everyone, I just got out of seeing Cobweb and here is my review plus recommendation plus rant. Let's start with the rant. Uh, you might be asking yourself, what is Cobweb? Well, that's a good question because I've only seen one trailer for it and that's the one that played before Insidious the Red Door. Other than that, I had no idea this movie existed or when it was coming out uh, until I saw like one or two people like mention it on Twitter um, because these people, whoever is in charge, decided to release their small little horror movie on Barbenheimer. That's right. Uh, it came out this weekend. This is its opening weekend, and they somehow decided to release it alongside Barbie and Oppenheimer. Um, which means it'll probably be out of theaters by the time this video is uploaded. Uh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so that's what I'm mad about, um, that no one will really see this because I have a I had to drive 30 minutes to the closest theater that was playing this because all the theaters near me were only playing Barbie and Oppenheimer. Um, so I'm sure for other people it might be in, in like rural, like, midwestern states it'll be hard to go see this movie and i'm sad about it because i really really enjoyed it also last thing about this the movie takes place during halloween so i don't understand why they would release it during july like you don't have to release it during october because i know october is really full with all the other scary movie releases but maybe september maybe august but in July on Barbenheimer really baffles me. Anyway, let's talk about the movie now. As I said before, I had only seen the trailer once and I basically forgot everything that was in the trailer. I knew maybe it had something to do with uh, the walls. There's something in the walls and that's about it. But oh my god, there were so many twists and turns. You genuinely cannot guess where the story will go. I was on the edge of my seat like basically the entire time. It's so fast paced, like there's no downtime. Everything's just go, go, go. Um, Freaking uh, Homelander, uh, Anthony Starr is in this as the dad. He does a really good job. Um, you know, that's, you'd think maybe something that's promoted a bit more, but I guess, you know, this has no promotion. Um, uh, so he does a good job as the dad, uh, whoever plays the mom. Sorry, I, I didn't look up anyone's name. Uh, she also does a really good job. And the kid who plays um, the main kid. Oh, God. They say his name a million times in the movie. Now I'm forgetting it uh, right now. Those three did a really good job along with the uh, substitute teacher, Miss Devine. Um, she was great as well. This is a really original horror movie story that I haven't seen before. It's, you know, not a franchise, not a remake, not a sequel, and I'm so happy about it, which makes me so sad and angry that it's coming out this weekend because genuinely, I think this is the next uh, Barbarian. When Barbarian came out, everyone was talking about it, everyone was seeing it, and Barbarian did better than the franchise horror movies in the box office when it came out. And I truly think this had the potential to do that. I think it could have stood its ground if it came out in October and, you know, faced the FNAF movie and all the other horror movies coming out in October. I truly think it could have stood its ground because that's how original it is. Uh, it will have a very strong audience reaction. Thankfully, there were a few other people in the audience with me, but I have to assume that it's because this is the only theater that's playing it in a however mile radius. So everyone who is going to see this movie is going to see it at this one theater. Um, and I would imagine if it was playing in a theater closer to me, I would be the only person in the theater. Um, yeah, I like because when I saw Barbarian, the audience was going crazy. And because that was a packed theater, because it was released well with a good you know, release strategy. But, you know, the pe the few people that were in my theater, we were having a very scary time. So, yeah, original story. I can't spoil anything, obviously. I would hate to do that to you guys. But uh, from what I remember the trailer, it it's like doesn't give you much, which I it's like very surprising because trailers these days just give you all the information but the trailer for this really reveals very little about the actual movie and where it goes um let's talk some technical stuff for a second it looks really good um i it's heavily inspired by 
Halloween, I'd say. Uh, that's just me taking a stab in the dark here. Maybe the director, some of the crew have talked about it in interviews, but just from what I was watching, I was felt very Halloween inspired. Even so much so, the town that they're in is called um, Holdenfield, which I would think is an homage to Haddonfield, which is the town Halloween takes place in. Um, lots of shots of carved pumpkins. Um, the the night scenes were lit so well, and the use of shadows. Oh my god, there's so many good shadow shots in this. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. I gotta look up this director and what else they've done. And the sound. Um, the sound was great too. And I, I'm a big, you know, I'm a big baby. I, I don't close my eyes, but I cover my eyes a little bit with my hand when I think a jump scare is coming. But this movie really does not use any cheap jump scares. It just builds suspense and it keeps building and keeps building. And when a scare is coming, you pretty much know it's going to be there, but it still gets you. Uh, the classic, you know, horror way of doing things instead of just silence and then a loud noise. This really earns its scares um, and it knows it's better than to use jump scares uh, because it has a really good original story that, you know, the, the horror is already there. Uh, it doesn't need to, you know, uh, manufacture it through cheap jump scares, which I really appreciated. I don't know what else to say. I just really enjoyed it. It's very original. It reminded me so much of Barbarian and The Black Phone. Um, once you go see it, you'll you'll know why it reminded me of those two movies. Um, so that if you liked those two movies, definitely go see this because I think this movie and those two movies would make an excellent triple feature. And with those three, it you know, original horror movies are looking good in the 2020s, along with so many other movies that are very well. It's a good time to be a horror fan, but a bad time because why Why would they just release this on Barbenheimer with very little marketing? I'm so upset. So guys, this is my plead to you to drive as far as it takes to go see this in a theater because uh, I think well, we got to show the studio that we care we got to give this money so they keep making ones like this. Obviously, if it's like, you know, three hours away, you can wait till it's on streaming. But, you know, I feel like this is movie's going to get a streaming renaissance because no one is going to go see this in theaters. But once it hits streaming, hopefully it'll find a little cult community. I'm part of that community. Maybe I'm hyping this up too much. I do really want to rewatch it to see if it, you know, sticks on a rewatch because a lot of the novelty is not knowing where the story is going and all the twists and turns. So I'd love to rewatch it, see if it still holds up. I'd say if it's accessible in a theater near you, definitely go check it out. If not, go see it on when it's streaming because I'm sure it'll be streaming in like two weeks uh, because that's the state of the movies now. But yeah, give it your money, uh, either renting it <laughs> on Amazon or whatever or in theaters. Um, and let me know what you guys thought of it in the comments if you have seen it. And yeah, if you like horror movies, I have a whole horror movie playlist of videos to check out if you haven't seen those already. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.